Today is Wednesday, May 6th, and I have a question for you. Have you prayed for your pastor today? You may think, well, that's self-serving. Maybe a little bit. I need it. But you need to pray for your pastor, whatever church you go to. Today, Lizette Garcia, a licensed professional counselor and also a member of Freedom's Prophetic Council, is going to take us to Ezekiel 44 as we study Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there, and talk to us about praying for your pastors, a new order of priests that you are a part of. Also, I want you to pray in the Spirit five minutes today, at least five minutes. Pray in the Spirit. Let the Lord refresh you. This is our 40 days of fire all the way up to Pentecost Sunday. It's going to be fantastic. Okay, Lizette, talk to us today about praying for our pastors, making for better churches and better people. Hi, Freedom. Today we're going to look at Ezekiel 44, and today we're going to talk about the new order of priests. We're also going to talk about how it is time to pray for our pastors. We are entering into new era and new order. I think it is time that we pray for the church, especially for our pastors. But let's look at what Ezekiel has to tell us. Ezekiel tells us that the ministers in the glorious new temple will be made up of an entirely new order. Here's how he describes the old order. If you're following me with your Bible, go to Ezekiel 44, 10, 13. It says, the Levites who went far from me went Israel went astray and who wander from me after their idols must bear the consequences of their sin. They may serve in my sanctuary, having charge of the gates of the temple and serving in it. They may slaughter the burnt offerings and sacrifices for the people and stand before the people and serve them. But because they serve them in the presence of their idols and may the people of Israel fall into sin Therefore, I have sworn with uplifted hand that they must bear the consequences of their sin, declares the sovereignty Lord. They are not to come near to serve me as priests or come near any of my holy things or my most holy offerings. They must bear the shame of their detestable practices. So let's look at these scriptures where the Lord outlines all the admonitions of the old order. He says they can continue to do all the rituals and, and order, but it will not minister to him or come near him. Then he tells of the new order arising. This is what God is calling us to do. Ezekiel 44, 15, 16 says, But the Levitical priests who are descendants of Sadoc and who guarded my sanctuary when the Israels were astray from me are to come near to me minister before me. They are to stand before me to offer sacrifices of fat and blood, declares the sovereignty Lord. They alone are to enter the sanctuary. They alone are to come near my temple to minister before me and serve me as guards. The Hebrew's name for Sadoc means right and righteous. And that is what God is calling us to do. In this new era that we're living is to be bold and to be righteous and to live in right standing before him. Ezekiel is referring to a man, this is who Ezekiel is talking about, Sadoc, to a man who served as a priest under the King David. He was righteous and never wavered in his loyalty to David or to God. Isn't that wonderful to have that type of uh, perseverance to serve the Lord in righteous and right standing. But let's also look at somebody else that didn't choose righteous. Abiathar was another priest under David who sided with his son Absalom. When Solomon took over the throne, he banished Abiathar from the temple ministry and sent him to the wilderness. You know, that's very heartbreaking when we see sin in the church or when we see, see someone that we love is sinning and not doing right it breaks our heart so I'm pretty sure this broke God's heart too but God is looking for Sadox in the new order that we are entering so and I want to talk about um, you know how it's so important to pray for our pastors and our leaders to rise up to righteous even in this time that we're living they're bombarded every day with new things. I see ministers changing their minds on 
social media now they're believing this they're wavering what the bible says and i think what we need to pray for our pastors what we need to pray for our leaders that they're always growing in god um, so they can um, self-discover the righteous that God has put into them, that they will grow in boldness and courage to speak the gospel and the word of God for what it is and not waver, not move at all. So if you join me right now, let's pray for them. Father, I just bring all the pastors, Father God, to you. Father, the pastors of America, the pastors of our nation the pastors of the world, Father God, but specifically, Father God, our pastors at Freedom, Pastor uh, John and Pastor Shelley, Father. They are a point of contact as we pray for other pastors. Lord, I pray that Pastor Shelley, that Pastor John will always grow in your identity as they are discovering new ways, Father God, to do church, as they're discovering new ways how they parent us, Father God. I pray, Father God, that they will grow in your identity into a place of righteousness, that they will not waver what you've called them to do, that they will not waver in their faith, that they will not waver, Father God, in the path that you have them, that they will not waver, Holy Spirit, in the things that you speak to them to say, but they will come like arrows out of their mouth with boldness and righteous to decree, to prophesy, to preach, to teach, to discipline when it's necessary, Father. I pray that you will give them the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the fear of you, the strength of you and your spirit to come upon them. Father, give them endurance, even in this season, to endure, Father God, to endure, Father God, when things do come. Father, to endure, to persevere, Father, even in good times and dark times, Father. I pray that they will always seek you how to lead the church. I pray that they will always come to you, Father God, with a humble heart, Father, and that you will pour your righteous upon them, Father, that when they speak, when they teach, when they preach, that the righteous of God will come upon them so strong. Father, I pray that you are with them. And I pray, Father, as they, they have learned to be parents to their own children, and have used your wisdom, Father God, to parent them in love. I pray the same, that you will give them wisdom to parent the church, that you give them wisdom to rise into a place of righteousness and to have clean hands before you. Father, I pray this for my pastors, but I also pray this for the pastors, Father God of America, that the church will rise up to a new level of righteousness and will not waver Father God will not waver in their faith, will not waver what your word declares, but it is time to be bold and righteous, Father. So I just thank you that what I have prayed for my pastors, that you will also do for others, all the pastors, Father God, all the pastors in the country that will rise up, Father God, because it is time to arise. It is time to arise and speak the truth, and, and, and preach the truth of the good news, Father God, of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining us today.